If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our goal here is to determine the potential difference across each of the resistors in part A. And in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is take this relatively complex circuit and simplify it. Now, the first thing to note is that this resistor here and this resistor here are in series. And if you're not sure why they're in series, just think about current flowing through the circuit. And as the current flows through the circuit, you're going to see that it never has to split. In other words, there's never a junction on this path of the circuit. So that places those two resistors that we circled in series with one another. And when resistors are in series, we can add their resistances. In other words, the equivalent resistance of these two resistors is equal to R2 plus R3. So we're going to go ahead and add them together. And when we simplify that, we get 6R. So what we'll do is we'll combine this resistor with this resistor into a single equivalent resistor whose resistance is 6R. Let's draw that to take a look at it. So here now is that equivalent resistor, and we're going to notice that that resistor is in parallel with this resistor here. And so we can find the equivalent resistance between those two by following this equation. Now we can see that R4 has a resistance of 3R, so we can substitute that into the equation. Now, of course, in order to add these two fractions, we have to find the common denominator. So if we multiply the denominator by 2, we would turn this into 6R, as long as we multiply the numerator by 2 as well. Now that we have a common denominator, we can go ahead and add these two fractions together. And then at this point, we can invert both sides of the equation. This is a neat little algebraic trick. So the left side becomes REQ over 1, which is just REQ. And then the right side becomes 6R over 3, which we can actually reduce to just 2R. So these two parallel resistors have an equivalent resistance of 2R. We're going to go ahead and combine them into a single resistor and simplify the drawing yet again. So here we have that equivalent resistor, and we'll notice that it is in series with this resistor over here. Now recall again that when they're in series, the resistances can be added together. So we're just going to go ahead and add R to 2R to make 3R, and then combine them into a single resistor. So we'll come down here and do that. Now that we have this simplified circuit, we're going to calculate the total current that's flowing through the circuit, which obeys the following equation. And so to calculate the total current, we're going to plug in the potential difference supplied by the battery, which is indicated by the symbol here, the EMF, if you will, of the battery. And then we divide that by the resistance of this simplified circuit, which we have discovered is 3R. Now that we have the total current, what we're going to do is work our way backwards to the original circuit. And we just have to remember a couple of rules when moving backwards through our drawings. When moving back to series resistors, we're going to bring with us the current, and then when moving back to parallel resistors, we'll bring the voltage. So, for example, starting with this resistor and moving backwards, we can see that we're moving back to series resistors. And according to this first rule, we're going to bring the current. So remember that the current in the simplified circuit was this value right here, so we're going to be bringing that current with us. In other words, the current that's flowing through this resistor here will be represented by this value, and the current flowing through this resistor will also be represented by that same value. So next what we want to do is determine the potential or voltage on this resistor as well as this resistor. We know that voltage is equal to a current multiplied by a resistance. Well, here is the current, and then here is the resistance for this particular resistor. So if we multiply them together, we're going to get the voltage. Now, if you look carefully, when you multiply them together, the resistances will cancel. And so you'll be left with just 2 times epsilon divided by 3. Similarly, if we multiply this current by this resistance, maybe we could bring that resistance over here when doing the multiplication, we could see that the resistance will cancel, leaving us with just epsilon over 3. So that's going to be the voltage on this resistor. Okay, so now we have the resistance, the current, and the voltage labeled on these two resistors. We're ready to move backwards, and you'll notice that when you move backwards from this resistor to these two, you are moving backwards to parallel resistors. Well, according to this rule, when we move back to parallel resistors, we're going to bring with us the voltage. Recall that the voltage on this resistor was 2 epsilon over 3. So that means the voltage on these two resistors is also 2 epsilon over 3. 
So now we have the voltage and resistance on this resistor as well as this one. What we don't have is the current. So we just have to one more time recall that current is the potential difference or voltage divided by the resistance. So for example, for this resistor right here, if we took the potential difference of two epsilon over three, and then we divided it by the resistance of three R, we could actually simplify this to get the current. Now, this is a little bit messy. You might wanna put this over one, and then recall that when you divide two fractions, you have to flip the second fraction and turn it into multiplication. So when performing that multiplication, we get two epsilon over nine R, and that's gonna represent the current a little bit ghastly, I admit, but the current right here will be two epsilon over nine R. We can get the current through this resistor again by taking the voltage and dividing by the resistance. Using six R as that resistance, putting it over one and then flipping it around. We'll then multiply those fractions and we get two epsilon over 18 R. You can divide top and bottom by two to give you epsilon over nine R. We are finally ready to answer part A of the question because when moving backwards, from this 6R resistor back to where it came from. Recall that it came from that resistor and that resistor. They were combined because they were in series. When moving backwards, we bring with us the current. Now the current through this resistor was determined to be epsilon over 9R. So that means we can safely say that this current is epsilon over 9R and the current through here is also epsilon over 9R. And now to get the potential difference across this resistor, remember potential difference is just current times resistance. So we can multiply the current of epsilon over 9R by the resistance of 2R. And in that case, the Rs would cancel and we'd be left with two epsilon over nine. So that right there, that resistor will have a potential difference of two epsilon over nine. If we multiply this current by this resistance, we would see that the Rs would cancel and we'd be left with four epsilon over nine. So that's gonna be the potential difference on this resistor. The resistor marked R4 was already determined to have a potential difference of two epsilon over three. So we can add that to the drawing. And then finally, the resistor marked R1 was determined to have a potential difference of epsilon over three. We had determined that all the way back in our last drawing. So we can mark that. So finally, we have all of the potential differences across the resistors labeled here in green. Now for part B, we wanna recall the circuit once we had boiled it down to its simplest form. We know that Ohm's law says that the voltage is equal to current times resistance. The voltage of the battery was marked as epsilon. The current we can just mark as I, and then we had determined that the resistance was three R. And so from this equation, we can see that epsilon is basically equal to three times I times R. And this is a result that we're gonna to wanna to hang on to for part. Now consider resistor R1. We're trying to determine the current that's flowing through it, so we have to take the voltage and divide by its resistance. The voltage was determined to be epsilon over three, and then the resistance is marked with just R. From the result we just discussed, we can see that epsilon is equal to three I R. So we're going to replace this epsilon with three times I times R. That's still over three and then that's divided by the resistance R. If we look carefully, we can see that the threes cancel, as will the Rs, and so we're left with just a current of I. That means that the current through R1 is going to be just I. We're going to do a similar setup for R2, R3, and R4. Now, please make sure you pause the video and understand how each current calculation was set up. Just note that the current flowing through resistor three which we've marked I3, is the same as the current flowing through resistor two. And if you're not sure why that is, just look back at the diagram and you'll see that resistor two and resistor three are in series with one another. So they're gonna have the same current. And that's why their currents are both I over three. And then the setup for the current flowing through resistor four is given. Again, please make sure you pause the video. It's the same type of calculation we performed in detail for resistor one. So all the currents through each resistor are now circled and all the potential differences were marked in green. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on